Hello everyone! Today I wish to share a project I'm working on that has to do with photolithography. This process is often used for semiconductor manufacturing, but it can also be used for larger scale things like printed circuit boards, which is what I want to use it for. If you are however interested in semiconductors or a very small fabrication process, then you could check out these two other creators, Huygens Optics and Sam Silov. Excuse my pronunciation. This presentation will first talk a bit about printed circuit boards, then how I reverse engineered the lamp driver protocol, and what is expected to come in a future video more about programming. Printed circuit boards, or PCBs, are used to connect different components to each other. They consist of a stack of non-conductive substrates and conductive layers. The most common material is FR4, which is made out of fiberglass and epoxy. A common conductor is copper and the typical thickness is 35 micrometers for the copper layer. Here is a PCB without any components. The text layer that you see here is called the silk screen. The green layer is called solder mask and it helps getting the solder we want it and it protects the copper from oxidation. And here we have a PCB that does not have any solder mask on it, it's just fiberglass board and copper foil. This is a piece of blank PCB. This particular one is single sided, so it has only got one conductive layer. In order to make this into a circuit board, the copper has to be selectively removed. This can be done by mechanical means, but for this video we'll focus on etching. Etching is the process of dissolving the copper chemically into copper ions, and this can be done selectively using a resist on the areas that we want to keep. One such resist is called photoresist, due to it reacting to light. In positive photoresist, the developer solution will wash away areas that is sufficient exposed to the light. The light will also have to be of a particular wavelength that the photoresist is sensitive to. This is often in the UV spectra, and for do-it-yourself applications, this is typically also close to blue light. And that would be around 400 nanometers. One way to selectively expose the photoresist is to use a mask, as we can see here. The better difference that you can get between the transparent and opaque areas, the better result you'll get. It's also important that the mask is perfectly flat and that the side with the pigment is flat against the photoresist, otherwise the thickness of the film will cause blurriness, which will become problematic when you're etching it. There are also methods in which you are directly exposing the photoresist, and there are many ways to do this. One way is to have an XY table that can move an aperture over the surface, potentially switching between different apertures like rectangles or circles or even complete components. Another method is to use a so-called laser polygon. This uses a polygonal mirror that rotates at a fixed speed and by synchronizing the laser to be on and off at the right times, you can project a one-dimensional image of light. This image can then be slowly swept over the surface that you wish to expose. This is also how some laser printers work, where the laser line will charge or discharge toner particles so that they will fall off or retain to the drum. I'm not exactly sure uh, which. But the end result is that the image drum becomes selectively populated with toner, and then this is fused onto the paper via two hot rolls at the end. Here we can see a model of a micromirror that you can use in DLP projectors. In a DLP projector you have millions of small mirrors that can sway some 10 degrees typically. And by having a strong light source you can either send the light out of the projection output or you can send them into an absorber. In order for DLP projectors to have multiple colors, you have a color wheel that is synchronized to the DMD ship. So it will be showing you one color at a time, but it does this very fast and you perceive it as a full color range. For this project, I'm going to use a DLP projector and I want to combine it with an XY table in order to both get a big working area and high resolution on the end result. Systems Overview Here is a mercury lamp that shines into the color wheel and then 
it shines further into the digital micro device ship. Here is a safety feature that prevents the projector from being turned on if this lid is not present. I also don't want this high voltage power supply to be generating high voltage when there is no lamp present. This could cause arcing and it's also a hazard. The power supply has a control signal going between the projector mainboard and the power supply. In order to remove the lamp driver, I will have to figure out how it works. I can solder wires on here to probe the functions while the projector is running. The unit is using a set of optocouplers to galvanically isolate the logic board from the power supply board. This is also useful for reverse engineering since then I can figure out the direction of those signals. Initially I did not know if I could just remove the color wheel, but later figured out that I can simply inject a signal to trick the projector that there is a wheel present by emulating the tachometer of that wheel. After figuring out how to emulate the power supply, more on this later, I also want to remove these two prongs so that I don't have some 400 or so volts exposed here. The safety feature will be replaced with the wire jumper. The lamp holder can be removed. Here is a fan that cools the lamp and the DMD ship and I will leave it here so that it protects the DMD ship. This is connected to the BLDC driver, a brushless DC motor that makes the color wheel spin. And then there is a feedback signal as I mentioned before and I figured out that if I inject a 120 Hz square wave it works perfectly fine. Here I was taking some initial notes about the signals used with the power supply. There is some sort of 50 Hz reference signal and it's probably reflecting the line voltage. And there is also a serial link or a UART, Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter. And back when I was investigating this, I had some issues with various voltage offsets when interfacing with the UART. And to combat this, I used this board that I made that has some potentiometers and comparators that I use as level translators. The comparators will output either true or false based on an input voltage and a reference voltage that I set with the tripotentiometers. This made it possible for me to sniff the protocol. In order to record the signals sent to and from the lamp module, I made a simple Python script, as we can see here, that uses two serial device nodes, one for the transmit and one for the receive, in order to log things. And here I will start it with the two device nodes and the baud rate and then a log file. I think that the baud rate is actually 9600, but that I got confused due to some parity. And if we look here at a log file that we have captured, we can see that we have a few columns here, where the first one is the delta time since the last recorded event. Then we have which device it is, what byte it is in decimal, hexadecimal, and in binary form. These values here, F1, F3, and so forth, we can see them in this file here, where I have tried to emulate a lamp by a simple Python script. And I don't know what most of the things here means. Some of this has one byte, some of this has two bytes. They seem to follow a query response structure where you respond with the same byte as the query was. So for example, here we have F0 and we respond with F0 01. Or here we have F1 and respond with F1 2D22. There are also queries that are two byte long. And in those cases, we respond with both those like here we have 6500 and we respond with 650001. What these parameters actually mean, I don't know. And I don't have to know that. I just have to know how to pretend to be lamp. And as long as the projector thinks that I am lamp, it will work. Here is what I really wanted to show in this video before starting to make all the background information about the project. We will circle back a bit to this later also, but here is a bit of a teaser where I have this table here where we have the sequences to the left and the responses to the right. The responses 
can only be two different commands right now, which is break or send. And if it's break, then the argument is the number of milliseconds that we're waiting. And if it's send, then it's a sequence of hexadecimal numbers. This is used to generate some C code that we then can put on the microcontroller that will match the sequences and do the proper response. Oops, that sounded bad. After working on this video for a while, I realized that I should split it up into multiple videos because it's getting a bit long winded. And I think it maybe doesn't make sense to have all the background on the projector project together with what I wanted to show regarding the Python programming. So the Python programming will be its own video and I will release it at some later time. And for now, this video will just be an introduction to the lithograph project that I've been working on. Thank you so much for watching. 